board-certified neurologist Dr. Tom Pitts is with us right now to break down this science and to talk about this innovation. Okay, you've got all of this excitement and promise, but let me let me just get to what we heard right there, that he literally thinks, and then the cursor is connected to that neural link chip in his brain. I mean, it's giving new meaning. He said he read a devotional every day, so he's clearly a man of faith. And there's a proverb in the Bible that says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So is science starting to really show evidence that the way we think impacts our entire environment and how much control we have over it? Well, hey, Adrian and Nick, and luckily man and neuron in this context work exactly the same. Because what happens is when you have a spinal cord injury, remember his brain, is Nolan's brain is totally fine, just like it was before his car accident. But the spinal cord is unable to take signals from the brain and transmit them to the arm. So that, that message is never passed on. So what happens is if I tell Nolan, hey, think about moving, let's say, your eyes to the right, or imagine, let's say, better example, moving the cursor to the right, just for simplicity's sake, let's say the nerve goes one, two, when he wants to look right. When he wants the cursor to go to the left, let's say the nerve fires in a pattern one, two, three. The little quarter size implant that goes in there that is then tethered in about a thousand points to different nerves where it listens and learns, says, wait a minute, every time Nolan wants to move the cursor to the right, his nerves fire in this pattern, one, two. And every time he wants to move it to the left, it's one, two, three. So that device is working on assumptions. Like we say, romantically in a relationship, we're finishing each other's sentences. This is a Bluetooth device implanted in his head that basically says, oh, there's a one, two, let's move the cursor to the right. And there's a one, two, three, let's move the cursor to the left. So the firing from the brain is still intact. Um, and what you're seeing is what Elon Musk described, spike detection. It's detecting different firing patterns, learning them and saying, oh, when he says, you know, I am, the answer is usually hungry. So it is filling it in based on repetitive um, um, calibration, but not calibration, and then making the arrow move on the screen. Okay, I, I have a question. I haven't looked into this particular part of the research. Is this artificial intelligence? Is it linked to that? Or is it only using the power of the human brain to become, I guess, machinized, if that's the right way to say that word? Good question. I mean, so I'm not, you know, like a technical expert, but I do know that it is learning. So I believe it is a form of AI. I mean, I, I might be mincing words on the technical definition, but put it this way, it is learning. And that is part of the issue. In fact, one of the challenges has been in this first patient and our only patient as we go into the FDA approving the second patient, which is upcoming, is that 85% of the tethers that linked recoiled back. And the problem with that, the whole issue with that was that it had to be, be recalibrated so that the remaining leads could still learn. So that was part of the issue was, you know, you, you want all those connections in there so you're learning from so many different people. It's like having a survey and asking a thousand people instead of 10 people. You've got the FDA, I believe, giving approval for this. So yeah. that means, could it be widespread? Could it be used throughout the country or throughout the world very soon? Sure thing, Adrian. I mean, I, I would expect it. Right now, it's in you know FDA approval. There's there's a lot of different kind of levels to that. Right now, this is uh, approved, I believe, for individual patients at the clinical trial level. So they have emergency use authorizations like I mm -hmm. used in COVID, which are immediate, uh, uh, you know, uh, off-label approvals by the FDA. Then you have you know three-phase clinical trials. Right now, the only people who can get this are people involved in a Neuralink study, and each one of those patients has to be approved by the FDA. But yes, the goal, of course, for them would be to get this out to the whole world. All right, Dr. Tom Pitts, thank you very much for your time. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of people who see the controversy in all of this and robots versus humans and all of that. But thankful for that young man that he's able Thanks, Adrian. to Thanks, Adrian. I tell him you'd have to be a quadriplegic before you make any profound statements here and put yourself yeah. in their shoes, you know? Well, and, and that's the thing, is that so many people are going to be wanting that technology for themselves, that innovation. But, you know, again, science. We've got to see what happens next. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.